So you just got an Ebo, tried it one time and thought to yourself, what the heck did I just get into? Well, I'm here to help you out. Let's get to work. Greetings all, I'm Bill Vensel. This is Chords of Orion. It's all about ambient guitar here and I've been playing Ebo now for 40 years. This is Ebo number four for me and uh, I just love it. On this video, I'd like to give you kind of a combination of tutorial and techniques for getting started with the Ebo and then also some tips and tricks. So the first thing I'd like you to think about is the tone of your guitar and amplifier. You can use any kind of guitar you wish with an Ebo. I would have a couple suggestions though as far as your amp setup or amp modeler setup. And that's not to go too trebly. Oh, let me turn that delay off. And maybe just get a, a clean tone with just a little bit of grit in it. You can also have some distortion in there if you wish. But I don't recommend using it to get started with the Ebo because you want to hear kind of that pure tone of the Ebo on the string so you can tell what's going on. The next thing you'll want to do that I recommend is to turn the tone knob on your guitar all the way down. The thing with the Ebo is that it generates a lot of energy in the string. And if you leave the tone control up the way you might normally do for a regular guitar tone, it can end up sounding very shrill. And eh, I just, I like it better with the tone knob rolled all the way down. Just kind of that nice mellow flute kind of sound. Anyhow, once you get your amp or amp modeler, your guitar set up, you're ready to get going with some Ebo sounds. The first thing I would like to suggest is that you focus on one string on the guitar. And my suggestion is the second string or the B string. Typically, that's going to be an unwound string. It's going to vibrate really easily with the Ebo. And uh, it's just going to be easy to start with. So on the Ebo, you'll notice two rails on the bottom, and they're designed to sit on the strings that are adjacent to the string you want to play. So in the case of the B string or the second string, the rails are going to sit on top of string one, your high E string, and string three, your G string. So go ahead and position the Ebo like that, turn it on, and then... Uh, what I would suggest you do is just simply pick a fret and tap the string just slightly and then begin to play the Ebo by pressing down gently on the string. Strings. It takes a little bit of practice and getting a smooth little tap and then pressing down gently with the Ebo to get the sound started. Okay, once you get that kind of, you know, some muscle memory there and, and really get the feel for how to get the strings started vibrating, what you want to do next is practice pressing the Ebo closer to the string to control the dynamics. And again, place your Ebo in between your pickups and then I'm going to, I'm going to demo here. I'm going to play the note and then I'm going to press the Ebo in gently to make the sound louder. And as you press the Ebo in, you probably heard this, not only does the sound get louder, but the Ebo begins to emphasize upper harmonics of the note. If you press it too far, of course, you're gonna bang the Ebo into the string. Which is probably not what you want. Let's do a couple of other things. One is let's learn how to leverage the pickups on the guitar to control the dynamics of your Ebo note. 
The closer you bring the Ebo to the pickup, the more magnetic energy will be produced. And of course, the string, uh, the note will sound out louder. So I'm gonna go ahead and demo here. I'm gonna just start playing a note and just bring my Ebo over top of the neck pickup. You can hear that's quite a bit of energy being produced. And you'll hear that since this is a humbucker pickup, there's two zones where you're gonna get more volume. Check this out. So whatever kind of pickups you have, go ahead and practice um, using the pickup to, to control the dynamics of your Ebo note. After you feel comfortable with that, before you start playing other notes, let's add some uh, vibrato in. Yeah, that's really nice. Now, you may have heard me, if you were listening closely, you may have heard me do some things interestingly with the attack of the note. I'm using a volume pedal on the floor, which you can't see. You don't need to have a volume pedal, but I like to use one, again, as a method of controlling the dynamics. Yeah, that's no volume pedal. Here's with volume pedal. Again, it's not required or necessary, but it is helpful sometimes in just controlling the envelope of the sound. All right, you've got one note going. It's time now to start switching notes on the B string. And what I would suggest is starting off with is what I see a lot of Ebo players do, and that's simply to pick some notes with one finger and then slide the finger up and down the fingerboard to switch your notes. So like this. Now, I don't want you to stay there, and that's where some Ebo players stop. They learn how to do that and add a little delay and reverb, which is great, by the way, and they're good to go, and they never progress from there. I want you to go further. So after you feel comfortable switching notes with one finger, I want you now to switch notes with more than one finger. all the while controlling dynamics by pressing on the Ebo closer to the string, bringing it closer to that neck pickup, and using vibrato. Try and make very musical, simple melody lines. And if you wish, yeah, go ahead and add in some delay. It's, it's really fun. If you've learned how to do that, hang out on the B string, but using multiple fingers, you're ahead of the crowd. The next thing to do is learn how to use multiple strings. In other words, learn how to switch strings with the Ebo. And most players that I have seen here on YouTube and, and in person don't ever switch strings. And that includes some very famous players who have recorded some very famous songs. But we're going to go a step further than them. So here's a way to get started with string switching. I want you to take your Ebo and you can turn it off first at first and just simply lightly drag it across all the strings of your guitar. 
and get a feel for what it takes to make it switch strings. By the way, you might want to play a bar chord. And I would suggest turning the Ebo slightly from the right angle. Turn it slightly, maybe instead of 90 degrees, 89 or 88 degrees, and that will make it glide across the strings a lot easier. After you get a feel for that, you can turn your Ebo on, bring up your volume, and here's what that sounds like. And it sounds really great with delay. So I want you to practice that until you feel pretty fluid with it, you feel comfortable with it. And I want you to practice focusing on different sets of strings, like maybe focus on the treble string. And then focus on the bass strings. Maybe focus on the strings in the middle. Until you feel like you can switch back and forth pretty easily. Next up, we want to apply that technique to just two strings. And let's go with the second string and the third string. So your B and your G string. I would just say fret it you know, what, at whatever fret you like. I'm going to use the seventh fret. And then simply switch back and forth uh, with the Ebo using the same technique of dragging back and forth. And you can go slow, right? Because as you're playing melodies, you're, you're not going to be switching constantly. Once you feel comfortable with that, then you can begin to play a melody. So I'm going to just play a couple notes on the G string and switch to the B string. You can see that I'm just dragging adjacently from string to string. You can apply that on other pairs of strings like the, uh, the D string and the G string. And obviously the fifth and the fourth string. So I would suggest just practicing playing on adjacent strings like that. Don't go crazy on the fingerboard. Just pick a simple melody or scale like I did and flip back and forth between two adjacent strings. After you feel comfortable with playing adjacent strings, the next step is to be able to skip strings. So maybe I want to play the fourth and then the second string. So what I would suggest with this exercise is start with the fourth and second string and just kind of try playing octaves, right? So I'm on the uh, seventh fret of the uh, fourth string and the tenth fret of the, the second string. So let's just kind of play octaves. Go ahead and throw that third string in there just for grins. Now, one thing you'll want to consider doing, depending on what you're playing, is actually gently lifting up the ebo instead of dragging it across the strings. That does take muscle memory to kind of get used to where you're playing on the fretboard. But with a little practice, with a lot of practice, you can do it. Along 
with skipping strings, you'll want to work on incorporating more than two strings together, right? So maybe I want to play the second, third, and fourth string as I'm playing my lead lines. pretty cool. There's a couple of other things here to just kind of think about. One is that harmonic mode. I've been using what's called normal mode, which emphasizes the fundamental of the pitch. Harmonic mode emphasizes the upper harmonics of a string. So here's what that sounds like. It's kind of like the Fernandez sustainer device and the Sustainiac too that have that feedback generating circuit on the guitar. But one of the cool things you can do with harmonic mode, if you turn on a little bit of distortion and uh, kind of play a lower note, you can actually bang the Ebo into the string for a pretty cool effect. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now we've been focusing on strings two, three, four, and five, but what about one and six? You can use the Ebo to play those two strings too. It's a little bit of a balancing act because you, you only have one rail to balance the Ebo against. So if I wanna play the high E string, I balance the Ebo on the B string and then kind of just get the, the middle part of the Ebo over top of the high E. And if I want to play that low B, uh, low E string, I do the same thing. I balance the Ebo on the A string, string number five. Another way to really add interest into your phrasing and notes on the Ebo is to actually kind of hit the Ebo against the string to create a more percussive effect. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, you can't do staccato with an Ebo, but you can do kind of pizzicato with an Ebo. And I would suggest holding it close to the pickup. So as you're kind of bringing the Ebo down, it's gonna pick up that energy very quickly and be able to create that percussive tone to the string. So don't give up. Keep working on those Ebo skills. You'll never, ever regret it. Here's a playlist I have of other Ebo videos, and I will see all of you on the next video.